But let's address the question of when should a person get baptized? When should a person get baptized? And let's just look at a couple of examples in the Bibles really quickly. And I just want to show you these examples because we see the example in the Bible of people getting baptized immediately after they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not something that they delayed either of their own accord or that men delayed. Um, they were baptized immediately. Um, it says here, you know, repent and be baptized, verse 38, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. So you see there the same day that they heard the word gladly, they were baptized and they joined up with that early church. And it's all through Acts. Let's go to Acts 8. Verse 9, but there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one, to whom they also gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. And to him they had regard, because that of a long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. But when they believed Philip, preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and the signs which were done. And you might say there, well, it doesn't say when he, that he was baptized straight away. It just says when he believed he was baptized. But remember, it says here in um, verse... Uh, sorry, which verse was that? Verse 13, Then Simon himself believed also, and when he was baptized... He continued with Philip. Now, I guess we don't know how long Philip was there, but if Philip was on the move, he had to believe and get baptized in order to continue with Philip. So it wasn't something that he delayed. And we can say, I think we can safely assume that at the time he was baptized, he believed um, in verse 13. Let's go a bit further down to Acts 8.36, where we see the eunuch. And they, as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. Do, what doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So there's the testimony that he has faith in Jesus Christ. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. So you see there that they didn't even wait to get to the destination where the eunuch was going. What, the moment he said he believed, he commanded, he said, hey, let's stop this chariot and let's baptize you right now because baptism is meant to happen immediately after you get saved. Uh, let's look at Acts 9. Okay, so this is the encounter of Saul with Jesus on the road to Damascus. And Saul arose from the earth, verse 8. And when his eyes were opened, he saw no man, but they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, neither did eat nor drink. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street, which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. But behold, he prayeth. And hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Now let's just go further down. And I, Ananias, verse 17, went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord even Jesus that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest that hath, uh, hath sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight, and I believe this is talking about you know, Paul getting saved here, and be filled with the Holy Ghost. There's that baptism of the Holy Ghost that will come on you when you believe. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received sight forthwith, and arose and was baptized. So you see there immediately, once Paul had his sight revealed, 
and he, was, he believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. He was baptized by the Holy Ghost. He was baptized with water. Um, Acts 10, verse 43, we already went here. I won't read it for sake of time, but remember we read this verse where you know, Peter is preaching to the Gentile believers. Remember he preached to them, the Holy Ghost fell on them uh, in verse 46. And then in the next verse he says, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. So he wasn't tarrying with them certain days and then baptized them. They believed. He baptized them straight away and then they asked him to stay with them. So we can see there the example of the Gentile believers being baptized straight away. Now I won't go to the others just for the sake of time, but you remember with Lydia and her house, she believed the Lord opened her heart and then her house was baptized straight away. And then we see the Philippian jailer where it says they took them that same hour of the night and was baptized. So it's not something that was delayed. So we can see very clearly that baptism happens immediately. When should a person get baptized? Straight away. As, as soon as possible, right? As soon as, as is possible. You know, you know, we, might, we, you know go, we might try and delay that just for logistics sake if we want to make a big deal out of it. But if somebody wants to get baptized instantly, hey, I'll, I'll take them down to a river and we'll baptize them um, if they want to be baptized. I'm not going to delay it if they do not want it to be delayed themselves. Um, but, you know, it begs the question, why then in churches does baptism get delayed? Because when you go to most churches and you want to be baptized, they'll delay it out, they'll make you sit a Bible basics class for 20 odd or 30 weeks to learn all the doctrines in order for you to be baptized. And you wonder, why do churches delay baptism? Well. I think it's because they treat baptism as something that it isn't. Remember, baptism represents the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So if you're saved, you, sh you can get baptized. But in most churches, like the Catholic Church, they've changed it. You know, they have um, changed it to, you know, you should only get baptized if you have a good knowledge of the faith. And that's why, you know, they want to teach you all this bi basic Bible doctrine and all the things that we've been going through over the last couple of weeks. And they want you to have a good understanding of the faith so that then, then you can get baptized. But baptism with water does not represent your knowledge of the faith. It represents the fact that you have your faith on Jesus Christ. So you shouldn't be delayed in baptism just because you don't know everything you need to know about Christianity. I mean, you know, that means I shouldn't be baptized. I don't know everything about Christianity. So at what point, how much, what, what is this arbitrary point that you need to be at in order to be baptized? It's sort of like with work salvation or assurance by works. It's just like this arbitrary point you know, my friend in Phoenix, you know, Matthew Stuckey, he used to always say with work salvation. Work salvation is somebody setting a bar just low enough that they can jump over. So it's like with uh, being baptized. They set that knowledge bar just low enough so that they can get baptized, but then you have to jump that bar that they've set, this arbitrary bar. You know, what's another thing? Um, baptism does not represent your commitment to a church. So you shouldn't have to take on this commitment or a vow, a vow to, to be, to be uh, to, to, what is, what's the word I'm looking for, to be loyal to, to a church, which is what a lot of churches do. And I think it's unbiblical for, to make somebody vow to, to men, to vow to a physical body. They should only be vowing their allegiance to the Lord Jesus Christ. But a lot of churches now, if you want to get baptized, they make you vow in front of the old congregation that you agree to keep hold of the doctrines of that church, that you'll submit to the elders, that you'll do all these things, making this commitment. But this is not what baptism represents. So why should baptism be delayed? Because you're not ready to make that commitment to a local church um, when you're already saved. If you're saved, you should be able to get baptized. What's another thing that baptism doesn't represent? Well, baptism doesn't represent your willingness to live right. So if you are, you know, not, haven't got all the sin out of your life or you know, aren't living right according to somebody else's standard, that should not delay you from getting baptism because you know, here's a news flash, guys. Baptism, it doesn't represent your willingness to live right. It is your willingness to live right. You know, so how can you be willing to live right in order to get baptized? I mean, you need to get baptized so that you are living right. You know, so that you are doing that first step of faith and keeping the commandment of God, 
why would you, it's like telling somebody, well, in order to pray, you need to start reading your Bible. Why don't they just start praying? You know, why would you say, you, you know, you need to be reading your Bible and praying before you can get baptized? Well, why would that stop them from getting baptized when baptism is also something they need to be doing to obey God? And just the last thing I just wanted to sort of touch on, because Kevin asked me this question, so I added it. Um, another thing that your baptism does not represent is your physical age. So I don't think your physical age should delay you from getting baptism, getting baptized. Now, obviously, we talked about not baptizing children that don't understand. So I'm not just saying, you know, we baptize our children and have an adult once their older child to get baptized, they should just get baptized. No, the point I'm trying to make here is, you know, I don't believe that there should be an age limit to when a child can get baptized because different children develop at different stages and they get baptized at different age. They get saved, sorry, at different ages as well. So setting a hard limit at say 12 years old or 15 years old or whatever years old, I mean, you could technically be um, stopping a, a younger person from obeying the Lord who gets saved at eight years old. Let's say a, a child who understands salvation believes on the Lord at eight years old, but you're not going to baptize them till four years later, then you're preventing them from obeying the Lord Jesus Christ for four years of their life when they should have already and wanted to get baptized when they were eight. Now, how, how do I plan on doing this in actual? I mean, I haven't really, really thought about it, but I guess I would just like to hear the testimony of a child, you know, apart from their parents. So I think for me, the test would be, you know, I mean, the test for Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch was enough for them to just say, hey, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God for him to get baptized. And I think I would just want to hear that, um, you know, apart from a child's parents, that they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, just to hear their salvation testimony, just to make sure that they understand what saved them and why they are saved, that they have their faith on the Lord Jesus Christ, that they are able to express and confess that with their mouth to me. Um, I think I would like to at least hear that before I'm willing to uh, baptize them. But that's my own personal conviction. Um, and you know, if people want to set age limits and have all these different conditions in their church, like I talked about before, you know, that bishop in that church is going to be responsible for how he did things in his church. So if they want to do those things, you know, I believe that it's not scriptural, but I'm not going to condemn them for having these rules. You know, they can have whatever rules they want. They can have dress standards and all sorts of stuff. Um, they are going to be accountable to God for that. Um, but this is my opinion. This is my conviction. And that's, you know, why I do it here. Why I plan on doing it like that in uh, this church.